I have concerns about this. I mean, we live in a world of fake news, and there you are putting a fake restaurant with fake reviews up on TripAdvisor. How helpful is that? I don't know. It felt real to me. I mean, I live in that shed, so <laughs> I, I really do. That's where I live. And uh, it kind of came to me one day where I was kind of just sat there watching Chris Tarrant's Extreme Railways, which is what I do every day, eating toast, waiting for ideas to do for Vice to come to me. So I had this idea, sat in the place Vice I was eating. Vice is the in. website that you yeah, yeah, write for, I, yeah. Yeah, that I write for. And I sat there and I kind of had this idea and I was like, why don't I just see if I can turn this place into a restaurant? I'm quite obsessed with TripAdvisor. But you, when you I say like turn it, it into so. a restaurant, you didn't actually intend to, you know, put in the work no. and become a chef and open your <laughs> shed up as a restaurant. You thought, I'll just make up the idea that this is a restaurant and put it on TripAdvisor. Yeah, I just knew that it needed to have that air of, like, mysticism. So, like, like things like, it's an appointment-only restaurant. It's impossible to get a table. Like, you, you know, all these, these sorts of things, like buzzwords that exist in food anyway so it was just like i set up all these sort of rules sent it out to my families and family and friends and was like just review it please in this manner and then we started climbing the rankings and so then the challenge was for you because you've <coughs> written reviews for restaurants in the past haven't you you've written fake yeah. reviews for restaurants yeah. you've been paid to do that that was my first job as a writer i was desperate young and yeah, willing so, to pay so the underlying so all of this is the idea that these re these these websites that we go to for advice actually can be manipulated and i think that's that was the challenge for you was having had some experience of doing that you thought could i actually manipulate it to such an extent that i create a completely fake, but the number one recommended restaurant in London. Yeah, and I mean, ultimately, it was because I found it really funny. Like, I found it really funny, the idea of people scrolling through this, this website and, like, drooling over my foot. You know what I mean? <laughs> I just loved it. I just loved that idea. I was like, God, if, people, if nonsense is that strong now, that yeah, people, people can read that into it. and be like, oh, my God, I want to see it. So when on, did you realise then, Uber? Because you didn't give it an actual address. It was just in Dulwich, wasn't it? When no, it was, on my, it was on my... I put my road name. Your road name, but it didn't have a number or anything. But when did you realise that it was sort of... It was starting yeah, to surge and you were getting a lot of interest? Well, when... Sorry, yeah. So when people start applying for jobs at your non-existent restaurant, things get <laughs> out of hand. When, people, when the council want to relocate you to Bromley, that's... Uh, that, to a better yeah, place. Yeah, to retail kiosks, kiosks, you know, like up-and-coming businesses like mine. Um, when, you know, when people are coming up, turning up outside of your house and are being like, do you know where but the shed at Dulwich is? But you're all these people. Yeah, but what am I getting off them? Well, I don't know. I don't know what you're getting off I, This was all for me. I loved it. I was, I was laughing through all of this until it kind of got a bit out of hand and I was like, yeah, well, what about if people just start... <laughs> I don't know, yeah, but... But you got to number one. I mean, I got you got to, to number, number one. one. Yeah. You'd managed to scam them. You'd managed to scam everybody. And then you decided you were actually going to have a night at the, rest, at the shed. Yeah. So you did actually run one last soiree. Yeah, one night only. We, we took three tables in of real people. So half the people in the restaurant were actors saying this is absolutely delicious because I wanted to recreate that same psychological <laughs> space as TripAdvisor. And, it, you know, it looks like hell down there. It, well, it's, it's a garden shed, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I live in it, but I'd say, yeah, it's like a man lives in a shed and then he put a restaurant in it. I mean, that's literally but So you put, you've got the people then, you've got guests to come in. You didn't charge them on the night. You said it was a... No, yeah, it I said it was like a press night. But, yeah, so basically I had... The, one of the tables we had in were a table from America, two people who the night before had been... It's their first vacation in Europe. The night before they'd been in Paris. And they wanted to spend their first night in London at my non-existent restaurant. We served them night. Except nine... they didn't know it was a non-existent restaurant. No, no, restaurant. no. No one knew. They, they thought they'd they'd they were having a looked, special night they'd out. They looked at the <laughs> They went, let's get into the number one mm. restaurant. Yeah. But, and so you gave them some microwave meal. Yeah, 99p meals from Ready Meals. They're delicious. Everyone at home, you know. But just, then, but the interesting thing was that some of the people that had been trying to get in then turned around to you and said, now we've been once, can we get in? Will it be easier to get in next time? Yeah. Yeah, they, they, so they were sat there and they'd been, they described themselves as foodies. They ate these ready meals and they looked miserable. And I was like, oh God, I'm going to get told off after this. This is all going to come. And they turned around afterwards and said, can I book again, please? Like, and that's success then. Suddenly you realise that you've done it. Maybe it's not as hard as they make it out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's an extraordinary story. It's a jaw-dropping well, story. Do you know what? I, I think it's very, obviously, I feel, I feel a bit like a mother here. I think you've, it's a very naughty thing to do. <laughs> you know, we're, try, we're trying to give people honest news all the time, and you, you set up a fake restaurant with, you know, and also you admit to doing fake reviews yeah, but look, as well. If you want a table, you can just tell me, all right? Just <laughs> <straight>. <laughs> you don't have tables, we, you don't have a restaurant. I think the important thing as well, though, is, is that we can be very governed by these, these websites that, are, that have fake reviews on well, them Well, anyway, one of the things the I was thing, going to ask it? you to get something helpful out of this was how would you suggest people see through 
as somebody who has written, has admitted to writing fake reviews of restaurants, how would you suggest people see through that and get honest opinions on things? Because we rely on these yeah, we websites and these apps. I think like we're at a point now where just try, truth is overrated now in internet websites. Like everywhere's all right. Just go on there and have fun. Like if I can turn my garden shed into a restaurant, and anything is possible. So <laughs> let's, just, yeah, let's be optimistic the, the about trouble. it. Let's be optimistic about it. The TripAdvisor have said that it uses state-of-the-art technologies to identify suspicious review patterns that are usually posted by fraudsters trying to manipulate business rankings. It added that the only people who create fake restaurant listings are journalists in misguided attempts to test TripAdvisor. It was the whole thing was fake. That was the, the whole premise of it. Whether you whether you agree with what you did, Uber, or, or whether, like Susanna, you find it a little it's bit a very tricky, naughty boy. Uh, <laughs> it is extraordinary that you managed to get away with it. And, and that are just the opening night. To read the story of what happened is just remarkable. <laughs> the audacity of it.